Hello and welcome to part two of the toilet training video series. In part one of our toilet training series, we discussed the overall impact ASD may have on a child when trying to learn the toileting routine, as well as the basics of teaching toileting routine to your child with ASD. In part two, we will focus on communication, sensory needs, modifications and adaptations, considerations, and discuss a few additional tips. Communicating their need to use the bathroom may be difficult for your child, so it will be important to establish routines, use visuals, and watch for body signals. It's also best to use the same simple words, signs, and pictures during each trip. Eventually, your child will need a way to independently communicate their need to go. We know that when individuals with ASD become stressed or anxious, their ability to use words is decreased. Therefore, a child who sometimes is able to verbally say bathroom may not always be able to articulate at the appropriate time. Having a visual support available when language is difficult to retrieve will enable them to communicate effectively at the right time. This visual support can also be used to communicate their need to use the bathroom in different places as well. Some children may refuse to sit on a toilet at first. If this is your situation, work on sitting on the toilet before even beginning the toilet training program. Set a goal to practice sitting on the toilet six to eight times a day. You can start with a short duration if need be and gradually increase the time as you progress. Other options for teaching this skill are having your child start with their clothes on at first to become accustomed to sitting on the toilet or allowing the child to sit with the toilet bowl covered. You can use cardboard under the seat, gradually cutting a hole larger and larger, or a towel under the seat that is gradually removed. Make sure your toilet seat is comfortable and the correct size. If your child uses a potty seat on the toilet, start with it on the floor rather than up high. Using a timer to visualize how long they will have to sit until the practice is over will help them understand the expectations ahead of time. Remember to motivate and support their effort with a special reward. Motivators might include singing a potty song, reading a favorite book, or even having a special toy while they're practicing. You can keep these items from falling into the toilet by using a padded lap desk while your child is seated. If your child doesn't understand the expectations or even the need to use the toilet, try to model using the bathroom or allow them to watch someone else on the toilet as an example for reassurance. Also, it's often helpful to give a drink 10 to 15 minutes before the toileting practice. This will help increase your child's chances of successfully urinating on the toilet, but avoid giving too much as this creates an unnatural routine. To increase their independence, dress your child in clothes that will be easy for them to remove. During toilet training, it is important for children to wear underwear during the day. They need to feel when they are wet. If necessary, they may wear rubber pants or a pull-up over their underwear. Diapers or pull-ups may also be used when your child is sleeping or is away from the home. There are many demands on the sensory system when it comes to using the bathroom. For children with ASD, these demands are multiplied due to difficulties they may have with body awareness, and heightened sensory sensitivities. Sometimes children with ASD don't like certain sounds, smells, or textures in the bathroom. Modifying these things, when possible, will make the bathroom a much more comfortable place. It's often helpful to do a calming activity before going into the bathroom to help calm your child's sensory system. If your child has a fear of falling off or into the toilet, Try using a footstool or practice sitting on the lid at first. If they complain that the seat is too cold, line it with a towel or a diaper. Some children have difficulty knowing when they're finished, so ask them to take a deep breath, count to 20, and try one more time. If they exhibit a fear of splashing water or the sound of flushing, you can always postpone that step when they're present until later on in the process, when they feel more comfortable. Warning your child before flushing or establishing a flushing cue like ready, set, go can be very helpful. Other options you might consider are playing calm music to drown out the noise of the flush or explaining with pictures what makes the noise when the toilet is flushed. 
by gradually bringing your child closer to the toilet when you flush, you will also help to reduce their anxiety. When your child is ready to flush for themselves, be sure to give them the opportunity to either leave or stay and watch. Finally, establish early the rules for flushing, that they only flush when they are done, only when there is something to flush, and only one time. Some children with ASD may feel comforted by the sensory input and deep pressure provided by the weight of a full diaper. You can try to replace the feeling of a full diaper by tightly wrapping your child in a heavy blanket before or after they use the toilet. You might also try putting bean bags in their pants pockets as a sensory replacement. In some instances, they may exhibit difficulty using a toilet because they need the sensory input or the feeling of security derived from a diaper. If this is the case for your child, you can try providing the sensory input around their waist by having them sit on the toilet with their diaper on, but with a hole cut in the bottom. Slowly increase the size of the hole by cutting away the diaper, making the hole bigger until they are able to go without the diaper at all. If your child has a fixation with water activities, such as watching water swirling in the toilet, Try to find replacement activities or objects that will meet their sensory needs at a more appropriate time and environment. You might allow them to play with water that swirls outside of the bathroom, or consider providing a toy to hold with a water feature as a distraction, such as a tornado tube or glitter tube. When a child is overly interested in flushing, consider covering the toilet handle to remove it from sight or give them something to hold and manipulate to distract them from the toilet handle. Providing a visual sequence to show when to flush, after replacing clothing for example, may also alleviate some stress because they will know when they will have a chance to flush the toilet. Lastly, when it is time to flush, you can direct their attention by giving them a sticker to match up with a corresponding sticker on the toilet handle. For toilet paper roll issues, try rolling out the preferred amount ahead of time or giving them the toilet paper they need when they are ready. You might also provide a visual cue for how much, such as putting a clothespin on where to tear or making a line on the wall for where to stop. If this continues to be a problem, try removing the roll of toilet paper and having your child use Kleenex or flushable wet wipes instead. Sometimes there's resistance to wiping or using toilet paper because it is uncomfortable. You might try offering different materials such as, again, flushable wet wipes, cloths, or a sponge. Remember to consider the temperature of the material you offer as some children may find either very hot or very cold items aversive. Finally, for a child that is struggling to understand how to properly clean themselves, consider using a doll as a model to show them what is expected and how to clean properly. If your child is not progressing like you think they should, Try increasing fluids and fiber in their diet. In the end, you may need to enlist the help of a doctor if things become serious. Once you have addressed your child's individual needs and prepared them for a variety of situations, you are well on your way to having your child become toilet trained. In part three, we will discuss considerations for using the toilet in new places, accidents, nighttime toilet training, smearing, regression, and habit or trip training. <laughs>